Well, good morning, everybody. Um, a few things to, to quickly run through. Uh, starting off with a, a tweet that I put out. Uh, normally, my tweets get seen or liked, should I say, by uh, two men and his dog. Um, this one is up over 75 likes. And it was the one in which I incorporated the screenshot of the email that I received nearly nearly two years ago from Mark Wiegert. Um, and just to recap, he, as, as with uh, Herman, started off his, as, as Herman started his email to me, the first thing they put is, thank you for your concern, which I find quite funny. It's almost like, well, we thank you for your concern, but please leave it to us. We know what we're doing. Um, that, that, in, at least that's how I... I interpret that particular comment. Thank you for your concern. Um, and then he goes on to say that he's 100%, 100% sure of, uh, of Stephen Brendan's guilt and stands behind everything done in the case. He then goes on to say that if you, if you get the chance, you might want to check out former prosecutor Ken Kratz's book, um, I immediately replied back to uh, Mark Wiegert, under no circumstances would I ever consider getting a hold of Ken Crux's book. Maybe if, if it was being handed out for free, then, uh, th then I might sort of read through it. Um, but I know some people have uh, bought the book and were unable to actually finish it because it was that, that poor. And the content in it was so bad. So a couple of things have happened. Um, there was quite a few comments. A lot of people picked up on the fact that um, on my tweet and commented about the fact that you know Fancy recommended um, recommending buying uh, Ken Kratz's book. Um, so <laughs> what have we got here? Um, as I say, I've I've not got a copy of Ken Kratz's book. I've got. Four books altogether, Illusion of Justice, Wrecking Crew and Making a Murderer. And um, my, my daughter accidentally, sort of by mistake, bought me the book The Innocent Killer, thinking that it was all about the, um, the wrongful conviction of Steve. But of course it was Mike Griesbach's attempt at uh, making, a, making a few bob um, on the back of a load of rubbish that he that he wrote in the last third of the book. The first two thirds of the book, excellent. The last third, it's absolute drivel, for most part. Um, so the ne next best thing, if 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 you don't want to read the book and you don't want to waste money on it, then um, I checked on some Amazon reviews. So here we go. The first thing I noticed was that, um, despite the fact that it's the worst book about uh, the making a murderer case. Um, it's also still the most expensive, so uh, I would definitely suggest saving your money. Um, then we get to the, uh, the reviews. Um, <laughs> one commenter put, as fictional works go, this book is nowhere nearly as good as Harry Pop Potter. <laughs> as toilet paper, I found it rough and slightly abrasive to touch. Not recommended. Mended. The only saving grace is that the sweaty, sicko, lardy face of the sexual predator author isn't on the cover. <laughs> don't buy this book and don't indulge dirtbag Ken Kratz's fantasy and ego with your money or attention. He really does make my skin, skin crawl. What a piece of... And then he's got four stars. So uh, not, not as in, in the review, but it's a piece of dot, 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 dot. You can make your own guesses as to what goes in there. The next one. <laughs> Comment. Um, narcissistic, sociopathic fantasy. The book should be titled Making the Framing of an Innocent Person and Fabricating Evidence, the Work of My Life. Subtitle, and attempting to make a profit off it, off of it,
by authoring this piece of utter rubbish. Next one. This guy is an attention-seeking, narcissistic slimeball. There is nothing new or constructive regarding the Avery case in this trashy, self-serving paperweight. Kratz is clearly milking his five minutes of fame for all it's worth and after his career as a district attorney ended in disgrace, all at the cost of two innocent men's lives. Disgrace to the law profession. I must admit, I agree with everybody so far. Mm, certainly do agree with them. Uh, next. This book is a highlight into Ken Kratz's egotistical life. He shows in life and in literature he, one, does not care about the person he is prosecuting for, in other words, Theresa Holbach, and two, the, the, um, he does not care that Stephen Avery had no connection in any way to the murder. His lies are inconsistent and the evidence is clearly inconsistent. So, thanks to him and the other persons of the state trying to win back face against Stephen Avery from his last conviction, Theresa Holbeck's killer is still out there, free, and her family are unable to find the peace they deserve. All that's left to say is, is this. Free Stephen Avery, free Brendan Dassey, find the right killer for Theresa Holbeck. Prosecute those that fed the public and courts wrongful DNA and forensic evidence. Next. Some of the evidence Sweaty Ken is crying about and claims were left out were either ruled inadmissible, were inherently weak, or in easily proven to be false. In other words, they were irrelevant and thus weren't seen in the documentary. Totally unconvincing. But don't take my word for it. Take a look at the freely available documents, objective evidence and videos by, amongst others, Eric Ozy. I've, I've added that bit. But anyway, a num videos by a number of people, including Eric Ozy, who have made videos about it. Anyone believing a word from this guy needs their head examined pronto. He's a disgraced, disgraced narcissist. He's been disciplined for sexting and he's a drug abuser. A totally, truly, profoundly vile man. One more, I think. The author of this book has low credibility. He is lawyer Ken Kratz, who tried to spark a sexual relationship with a domestic abuse victim and made so sexual remarks to social workers. He was barred from practicing law for four months by the, the Wisconsin Supreme Court, as announced, as reported on CBS News 6th June 2014. This, this last comment I particularly liked. I liked. Fantastic work of fiction. Don't buy it and put money in this corrupt man's pocket. He should have been locked up for his behaviour prior to and during the court case. Here's the best bit. Proven squeaky deviant. <laughs> I think that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so another tweet that came out that's very interesting, of course, relates to Mark Williams' phone call and uh, what's happened with uh, these cremains. It was a tweet that came out, it would have been about 10 o'clock uh, last night, my time, um, from Kathleen Zellner. For your information, the state has confirmed with us that they did in fact give many bones back to Teresa's family. They have no proof that they gave notice to Stephen Avery or his attorneys. This equals a violation of state law and due process. Um, and of course, immediately I'm, I'm thinking, well... Yeah, of course, of course, they, they have no proof of uh, notifying Steve or his attorneys. I, I find it qu quite offensive that 
that they even considered handing over the bones just as Steve was waiting on a decision from the Supreme Court. It suggests to me, um, and maybe somebody else can put me right on this, to me it suggests that um, the um, Wiegert, Garn and Fallon were given the heads up from somebody within the Supreme Court that, oh, we've got this Avery case coming up, I wonder what we'll do with this, ha ha ha. Um, to me, it, it, it's, it stinks of thinking it's all going to be done and dusted. Once he's got his final appeal, that's the end of the legal process and we can just hand this stuff back. Little did they know how badly they were going to um, be exposed by um, Moira and Laura in um, making a murderer coming out. Um, Apparently, Kathleen Zellner is insisting, obviously, that the rest of the bones are are tested. Um, but to have handed back bones that were that were not in the um, that, that weren't discovered behind Stephen Avery's garage to give those back as being Teresa's, I think that that speaks absolute volumes. Um, and the fact that the state has at last admitted to doing something completely wrong, uh, which is against their their own their own rules and laws. Um, anyway, I'm uh, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Um, on a lighter note, uh, one of the videos that I did a couple of days back has had probably more comments than any other. I I promise I will <laughs> I will try and avoid doing any more videos of uh, Eric Cozy singing, um, which is a shame because one or two people had commented that they'd like to hear more of his singing. Um, obviously, tone deafness is a, uh, is a problem over there on the other side of the Atlantic. Or is it? I've got a sneaky little sort of conspiracy theory here, and that is this. As one of my advanced pupils pointed out yesterday when he heard him singing, he said, well, just bear in mind, over here in the UK, we had a very famous comedian called Les Dawson, who played piano very, very badly, appallingly so. And also famously, Eric Morecambe appeared with Andre Previn, playing uh, part of the Grieg Piano Concerto, which is a great sketch. And what, about, what people need to realise is that in order to sound that badly actually takes quite a bit of skill. I suspect that our dude is trying to kid us on that he's that bad a singer. I suspect that he can actually sing better than that. Although, as yet, he's still to prove it. But to be able to sing that badly, that does take a certain skill. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. Um, Keep sending me your comments. Uh, I keep liking them. And uh, let's hope it's not going to be too long before Kathleen Zellner gets her evidentiary hearing. And then really let's, uh, let's hell loose on uh, Manitowoc Sheriff's Department and the state of Wisconsin. Anyway, speak to you soon. Bye for now.